Welcome again to Dairy Judging 101. I am Dr. Katherine Knowlton, a professor in the Department of Dairy Science at Virginia Tech. We are creating a series of short presentations on the basics of judging dairy cattle. Today's is the second of a few on giving good oral reasons. In the first YouTube video we created on oral reasons, part one, I introduced you to these four rules. And in this current presentation, part two, I'm going to dig into them more deeply. If you haven't yet watched part one, I encourage you to do that before going through this presentation. And so let's dig deeper. Rule number one is to always compare cows rather than describing them. So, for instance, say one places over two for her advantage in dairy character. It's not enough to say one has dairy character. The point is that she has more dairy character than two. She has an advantage in dairy character. Continuing with rule number one, Use ER words. ER words are your friend, okay? One is longer and leaner in the neck, cleaner and sharper over the withers. Always, always, always ER. Now, let me play some clips from students to demonstrate this rule. One has more bloom and capacity to her udder and is fuller and higher in the rear quarters. One is the more stylish cow. She is harder over the top because she is stronger in the chine. And here's another example. Two has the advantage in udder. She has a higher, wider, more secure rear udder than three. She has more veining to her udder and a more capacious rear udder. There is a corollary to rule one that I need to talk about with you. The rule is to always, always, always use ER words. But at the same time, you do have to pay attention to the rules of grammar. For instance, derrier is not a word. Leveler is not a word. So say she's more dairy, she's more nearly level. If you're not sure whether to add an ER or to use the word more, check with your coaches. Now, with this rule, as with a lot of rules, there, there are exceptions. There are two places in your reasons where you should be describing your cow instead of comparing her to another cow. Those two places are your opening and your closing. In the opening, we teach our students to describe that first place cow in vivid terminology and really help me to see that cow and see why she wins. So one tops the class as she combines her dairiness with style and balance and the best udder in the class. That's descriptive. That's not comparative. And in the opening, that's what you want. Same thing in the closing. Four places last because she is a stale cow who lacks the bloom of udder to place any higher. Now, let me play some clips from students to demonstrate this rule. 2314 is my placing for these Holstein aged cows. Two wins because she best combines correctness of feet and legs with a sound, well attached udder. And here's another example. While I admire Three's youthful, high udder, I left her last, for she lacks the depth and openness of rib to place any higher. It is for these reasons I place these Holstein two year olds. Four, two, one, three. Now let's talk about rule number two, and that is within a pair of cows, start your reasons with the most important difference, the most obvious difference between that pair of cows. Now listen, that's not necessarily going to be the most important category on the PDCA scorecard. You all know that the udder is the most important trait in judging dairy cattle. But if you have two cows that are really good uttered, but one is a lot more dairy, a lot better legged than the other, don't talk udder first because one isn't beating two because of her udder. One's beating two because she's more dairy or because of her more correct feet and legs. So start with the most important and obvious difference. Also, this isn't necessarily going to be talking the cow from front to back. It'll really help you if you make a point of noticing this and writing it down in your notes before the class leaves the ring. Always, always, always ask yourself, do I have the most important thing first? Now, let me play some clips from students to demonstrate this rule. 3241 is my placing for this class of Ashier three-year-old cows. This stylish three wins and places over two as she combines her clean cut and open frame with a sound udder. When compared to two, three is the cleaner boned cow. And here's another example. One, four, two, three is my placing for this class of Guernsey three-year-olds. I started with a pair of open rib dairy cows, but I prefer one's capacious udder to win the class. One is wider and fuller in her rear udder and has more bloom of udder than four. 
And here's another example. 4213 is my placing for these Holstein three-year-old cows. The big four tops the class as she best combines size and dairiness with correctness of udder. Four is a more capacious udder than two with a higher, wider rear udder attachment. Four is more balanced in her quarters than two, noting that two is light in her left front quarter. Rule number three is organization. You need to be well organized and strategic in your reasons. Let's first talk about kind of the overall structure of your reasons. You'll start with an introduction where you tell the official your placing and maybe a little bit about the first place cow. Then you go to the first pair and you explain why the first cow's over the second cow. Make sure that you end that pair with a grant. A grant is where you acknowledge that, yeah, the second place cow is a little bit better than the first place cow in a certain trait. Now you're into your middle pair. Explain why the second cow is over the third cow. Go through that pair, end with a grant. Find something about the third place cow where she's a little better than the second place cow. Go to your last pair. Explain why. Why is the third cow over the fourth cow? End that pair with a grant. Find something about that down cow where she's a bit better than the cow above. Do think of grants as mandatory for every pair. It kind of gives you a little bit of cover. You know, in a grant, what you're saying is, okay, Ms. Judge, if you flipped the pair on me, here, here might be why you did it. You're kind of covering yourself. Once you've gone through that final pair, given your grant, now move to your closing. Admire something about that last place, Cal, but then tell us again why she's last and end with your placing. Here's more on rule number three. And that is, don't bounce back and forth between categories. So what I'm talking about here is, when you're talking a pair, cow one over cow two, talk complete categories. If udder is your first trait you want to talk, talk all the way through udder. Tell me everything that's different about the udders in one over two. Then talk, let's say, dairiness, whatever the second most important trait is. And then move on to whatever the next most important trait is. What I don't want you to do is be saying she's higher and wider in her rear udder attachment, has a straighter set to her leg when viewed from the side, and she's cleaner in the neck. That's confusing. I call this the old fart rule. You need to be thinking about the old farts that are going to be evaluating you. Make it easy for them. Be organized. Now, let me play some clips from students to demonstrate this rule. One places second and over three as she is a cleaner made heifer. One is longer in her neck more defined on the top and over her rib, and refined in her bone. I also prefer that one is a taller heifer, who is deeper in her fore and rear rib and has more spring of barrel. I admit three holds her legs more squarely beneath her. And here's another example. One has more spring and arch to her barrel, is deeper in her heart, and has more depth of rear rib. Additionally, one is wider in her hooks and pins and wider in her chest floor. And now we are at rule number four. Rule number four is to be specific, be very specific, and then be even more specific. I get bored when people just say one place is over two because she's more correct in the hind legs. Blech. Give me some more detail. You can start with that. She's more correct in the hind leg, but then tell me because she's straighter in the hock when viewed from the side, because she's stronger in the pasterns, because she's deeper in the heel. Give me detail. Tell me where. Tell me how. Tell me why. Challenge yourself. Expand your vocabulary. You can get resources from your 4-H coaches. You can get resources from the internet. There are all sorts of lists of good terminology to use. So really push yourself so that you've got the vocabulary to explain what you're seeing. Now, let me play some clips from students to demonstrate this rule. Lastly, 3 uses her advantages in memory system to place over the poor uttered 2. Three is more balanced in her rear quarters because two is congested in her right rear quarter and light in her left rear quarter. Three also has teats that hang more plumb to the ground. And here's another example. One is wider in the chest board, cooler in the heart, deeper in her fore and rear rib, feral, and has more strength to her rib. One is smoother blending in her shoulder and cooler in her cross when compared to four. The goal in your reasons is to paint a picture of the class. Your reasons are helping the judge remember the class and perhaps be persuaded that you're right and maybe they were wrong. There is a very important corollary to rule number four. 
I want you to I want you to be specific, more specific, tell me everything you're seeing, but I do not want you to lie, okay? If you see it, say it. But check yourself. Am I sure this cow's really wider in the chest than that one? Am I sure she's deeper in the rib? Just because a cow is higher in her rear udder attachment doesn't mean she's wider in her rear udder attachment. So if you see it, say it. But check yourself. So here they are again one more time. The four rules for giving good oral reasons. I hope this presentation and the others have been useful to you and that you'll keep an eye out on YouTube for additional presentations from us on more tips on oral reasons and more tips on judging cows. But let me stop here and do some thank yous. I need to thank the three Virginia Tech students that are helping me put together this series. They are Carol Wolhusian, Hannah Van Dyke, and Chelsea Abbott. Also, thank you to Hordes Dairymen for their support of this project. And always, thank you to the dairy farmers across the country for their support of our judging team and yours.